Welcome to the Missouri Association for College Admissions Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. So first, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Second announcement, you can type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today by using that Q&A feature. Third announcement, this is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash Missouri. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Dayton. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hope you are all having a wonderful um, start to your week. I'm going to get ready and talk to you a little bit this evening about the University of Dayton. So the University of Dayton, we are located in Dayton, Ohio, about six hours from the greater St. Louis area. So not too far enough away, but just far enough. Um, it is a nice, easy drive. Um, so very easy to come home over the weekend. Uh, University of Dayton, we're a top tier Catholic Marianist research institution, and we are dedicated to empowering our students to learn, lead, and serve. This is so important to us that this is actually our mission at the university. We strive to be a welcoming, friendly campus, our Marianist values such as inclusivity, diversity, hospitality, community, working towards the common good really do permeate everything that we do at the university. For us, that's what it truly means to be a Marianist institution. A little about our DNA, we have about 82, actually now 8,600 undergraduate students. The past two classes were our largest um, classes in history. Um, with a little over 2,100 students, uh, 11,000 total with grad and law. So we're a great mid-sized institution. I like to call us the baby bear of schools. You have all the big school resources with a small school feel. So we're just right for just about everybody. Uh, our student to teacher ratio is a 14 to one with an average class size of about 27. Our retention rate is about 91%, which is one of the highest in the nation. Retention rate is how many first year students come back to be second year students. Uh, and so with that, we know that the more students come back for their second year, they have a higher chance of graduating from that university and graduating on time, which ultimately means less debt, which is what we want for you all. We also have um, over 50% of our students come from outside of the state of Ohio with about 43% or 43 states represented. And um, across our entire university population, we have about 12% international, which is really cool. So again, diversity, inclusion, super important to who we are. We have over 80 different majors and minors for our students to choose from. So there's something for everybody. Um, it's very easy at our university to major in one area, minor in another, maybe double major. Uh, and they're going to fall into one of these four categories. What's really cool about our universities, our departments are going to encourage you to live outside your major bubble. And then we're a very active campus. We are known as one of the happiest schools with the happiest students. Um, we have a very active campus community with over 700 or to, excuse me, with over 270 clubs and organizations on our campus. Over 50% of our students play a club or intramural sport, but we do have a very active theater program. Um, it's one of the top in the nation. Music, we have a marching band on campus, uh, and there's just lots going on for our students. So I always tell them, if you're bored on our campus, it's your own fault. And over 85% of our students live in the student neighborhood. That top right picture is uh, just a small snapshot of our student neighborhood. Uh, our students live and learn in community with one another, and we know that it makes everybody better. And our student neighborhood is one of the ways that we really intentionally build community at the University of Dayton. So again, highly residential. Our students stay on campus on the weekends. We have a lot of fun. We just had family weekend this last weekend, um, so it was a great time for all of our families to come together. And then the outcomes. Uh, so we have a 97% success rate. Uh, that means within six months of graduation, 97% of our students are employed in grad school or they're doing some sort of service learning. Of those who are employed, 97% are employed full-time and 88% in their chosen field. And you can see this is just a small snapshot of where our students get jobs, get careers, um, but we are really proud of our outcomes. And then the other thing we're really proud about at the University of Dayton is our transparent tuition plan. 
uh, we really want you to know what's going to cost to send your child to college for four years. And so we, when we send you your financial aid packets, we don't just show you what one year costs at UD, we actually show you what all four years cost. So you can plan these next four years with peace of mind. We also take all of your scholarships and grants off of your tuition to get you a net tuition price that's locked in every single year for the next four years. The only variable is housing, so you really will know what it's going to cost you. Just by visiting UD and filling out your FAFSA, you automatically get a $4,000 book scholarship. It's worth up to $500 a semester for your rented textbooks. And then finally, we're not going to hit you with any fees. So we really wanna make sure that you know truly what it's gonna cost um, so that way you're prepared. And then next steps. I know many of my counselors are gonna talk about the next steps as well, um, but October 1st on Friday is when the FAFSA opens. So we encourage you to really start getting going on the FAFSA. The sooner you send it into us, the better off you are just because it's done. Uh, November 1st is our early action deadline. It is non-binding. Uh, so we do encourage our students to apply early action. You just know a little bit sooner. We also are test optional at the University of Dayton. So when you apply, there's nothing else that you need to do. Uh, it is really easy. Um, you just submit an application, send us your transcript, and then if you don't feel like your test scores are a good representation, don't send them. It's totally fine. Uh, and we encourage our students to apply by that number, November 1st deadline. If you are a nursing student, you must apply by November 1st. But if you get everything else to us, to us by that time, you'll know by the beginning of February kind of what your financial aid outlook is going to be if you've been admitted, what your scholarship is. So I um, really encourage you to get that all in. Um, so as I'm wrapping up here, this is just a little bit about the University Dane. Please feel free to um, drop any questions. And I think I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Missy Bondi Hasselback, uh, and I've been at the University of Dane for two years. Absolutely love it, and I hope you will too. Thank you so much. Up next, we have the Catholic University of America. And Kimberly, you are on mute. Sorry about that, here we go. <laughs> Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Kimberly Clark. I'm one of our associate deans with the Catholic University of America. Um, we are a small private Catholic institution located in the heart of DC. We have just under 3,100 um, total undergraduate students um, and around 2,600 graduate and law students. We um, have about 80% of our students are um, Catholic. Uh, it's a place definitely where, you know, you can practice your faith or um, it, our Catholic faith is something that we're, you know, really proud of. Um, however, you know, we do have students that aren't Catholic and that's totally fine. Um, we are open to all faith backgrounds, race and identities, um, with also 27% of our student body being ethnically diverse. Uh, we were founded as a graduate institution, so founded in research, very heavy in research, and that still carries over today as we move to an undergraduate um, institution. We have 34 research centers on our campus. Um, we actually have a day in the spring um, where we cancel all the classes, all of our students, faculty, and staff come together and really have an opportunity to showcase um, what our faculty and students have been working on in regards to research throughout the year. Uh, we do have small class sizes. On average, it's about um, 19 students per class um, with a 10 to 1 student faculty ratio. So our professors are really getting to know you. We do have the largest green space in DC with over 176 acres. Um, so it's very unique in the sense that you're in the heart of a city, but then you have all this land and campuses right there. So it kind of feels like you're in your own little bubble outside a big city. Um, we are a very active campus. 30% um, of our students will participate in NCAA Division Three athletics across 25 different teams. Uh, we have club sports, intramural sports, two fitness centers on our campus. We do have over 100 student clubs and organizations for students to get involved in. If there's something you know that we don't have that interests you, by all means, leave your mark on our campus and start your own club or organization. Uh, we have a three-year residency requirement on our campus, so I would say campus is very active. Um, we have about 40 to 50 different events per week. Based on our location, we are the only uh, university in D.C. that has their own metro stop. 
Um, so very unique in the sense that um, you get off the Brooklyn CUA stop and you're right on our campus. Um, three stops from Union Station. You can be downtown in a matter of a few minutes. Immediate metro access, very accessible for our students. Um, a lot of our students will take advantage of our backyard, which is DC. All the history, culture, the museums, the monuments. We have 10 plus professional sports teams, lots of different things to explore in DC itself, as well as a lot of internship opportunities as well. A lot of companies um, are based in the DC area um, with over 3000 internship opportunities for our students. We have an academic and career success center, which is a one-stop shop for our students. So they'll work with you. Um, beginning freshman year with academics and then you'll transition to the career um focus on your resume interviewing um, internship opportunities and of course job placement career opportunities 90 percent of our students are employed um, by graduation or serving or continuing their education uh, within six months of graduation 76 percent of our students um, will take an internship and over 60% of our students will do two or more internships. So a lot of internship opportunities um, below on the slide is a couple places where our students will intern, uh, but several other places um, where our students will end up. We have 12 schools across campus, um, but we have nine that are for undergraduate students. Our School of Arts and Science is gonna be our largest academic college. Uh, we have our School of Architecture, our Bush School of Business, Engineering, our Rome School of Music, Drama and Art. We have our Conway School of Nursing, which if you are interested in nursing, if you have a student that's interested in nursing, um, our nursing school is now direct admit. We also have a School of Philosophy, our National Catholic School of Social Science, and our School of Theology and Religious Studies. So in regards to um, applying to Catholic, um, we are on the Common App and the Common App only. Um, so we are looking at your high school transcripts, your GPA, we recalculate to our standard 4.0 scale. Um, we look at the strength of curriculum um, and pull out your core courses. So we're really seeing, you know, did you progress throughout the school year, um, throughout your freshman to your junior, senior year? Um, were you challenging yourself? Uh, we are test blind, so we do not require test scores at all. We don't even want to see them. Um, we'll also look at your activities, your service, your leadership. Were you involved in any organizations? Um, volunteering? Did you play any sports? Um, have a part-time job? We want to know about it. Um, so when you apply for Catholic, you are also um, applying and considered for our honors college as well as scholarships, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Um, but our early action deadline is November 1st, which I do encourage you to apply by. We do have our early decision, which is binding, and that deadline is November 15th. But when you apply to Catholic, you are applying automatically for the scholarships. It ranges from 15,000 to 32,000 a year. We also have a parish scholarship, a legacy grant, and then we do have a full um, tuition scholarship for our high achieving students. Again, no separate application, and we do um, offer uh, no or no application fee when you submit the Common App. And then just the next steps, um, feel free to connect with us on social media. We also have a couple virtual events that are coming up, as well as another open house, which is October 23rd. Um, but thank you for your time, and I'll drop my email in the chat should you guys have any questions moving forward, but thank you. Thank you. Our next presenter is Marquette University. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen here. I can get it going. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Anna wilkes mitru and I'm an admissions counselor at Marquette University here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, to get started, just a little bit of who we are at a glance, kind of like this slide shows here. Um, we do have average class size of 23. Undergraduate students, we're sitting around 8,000 8, students, which makes us a medium-sized institution, um, which is a really wonderful opportunity. Again, you get those great benefits of being in the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is the largest city in the state of Wisconsin, um, while also having a very um, close-knit community on our campus. We do have a student-to-faculty ratio 14 to one, so you get those smaller class sizes in that one-on-one -on -one attention to with your professors. 
Um, we have over different over 80 different majors on campus. And in addition, we also have over 325 different student organizations that you can be a part of. So many of our students take advantage of these involvement opportunities. Um, so if there's something that you've thought about that you're interested in, something that you want to continue being involved in um, once you have graduated high school um, in college, we probably have that. And if we don't, we strongly encourage our students to um, start something, start a new club, start a new organization, uh, because chances are someone else is also interested in that as well. Like I mentioned, we are located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which, which brings a lot of really benefits um, to our campus. We have a really wonderful relationship with the city um, in regards to just opportunities for students. So on campus, uh, we do have seven colleges. We have um, College of Arts and Sciences, Business Administration, Communication, Education, Engineering, Health Sciences, and Nursing. Um, we do have uh, professional schools as well if students are interest, interested in continue, continuing their education. So that includes the School of Dentistry, the Law School, and the Graduate School in which I am um, and which I am an alumna um, of the graduate school program at Marquette. Um, all of our colleges offer really unique and incredible opportunities for our students. Um, but something to note about Marquette that is a little unique is that we are a direct admit university. So when you apply to Marquette and you're admitted to uh, Marquette University, you are also admitted to a college as well. So you are admitted to one of our seven colleges. There's no separate application. There's no waiting um, to get into the college later. You're jumping right in uh, to your major courses the first year, uh, the first semester of your first year on campus. So you're jumping right in, getting that hands-on experience, whether that's in a classroom, whether that's in um, a simulation lab, whether that's looking for internships and making connections um, or starting research. We have really amazing opportunities to jump right in there. Um, and we have students who come in undecided as well. We call students who are undecided multi-interested um, because we believe that they have so many interests, they just quite can't quite narrow it down uh, to what they might want to study. And so um, the opportunity of having direct admit uh, colleges is it gives students the opportunity to learn, you know, very, very quickly that maybe this isn't the direction they want to go and they want to head a different direction or a really great confirmation of yes, this is where I want to be. We are a Catholic Jesuit institution, and with that, that just that means that um, we hold on to those Jesuit values when we are working with our students and um, working inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, the Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests that were founded over 500 years ago, um, and they really value education and social justice. And so that's something that we really value on our campus, again, being inside and outside of the classroom. So the education piece being um, those, those academic courses, whether that's our core curriculum or um, the major courses themselves and outside of the classroom, um, including service. Um, that's something that over 80% of our students are really involved in service opportunities on our campus, whether that be through service learning, service organizations, or our campus-wide service programs. Um, so a lot of our students are really involved, again, both in and out of the classroom using those Jesuit values. Getting a look at where Marquette is in relation to the city of Milwaukee is uh, we are the, the uh, bottom part of this picture here. Um, and you can see how close we are to the downtown space and Lake Michigan. Um, if you go down Wisconsin Avenue, which is that street you see in the center of campus, um, about, we're about a mile and a half from Lake Michigan. You'll see um, from on the screen here, we've got the east side, the Pfizer Forum, which is where the national champion Bucks play, um, as well as our men's basketball team. Uh, men, our men's basketball team plays there um, as a division one um, athletic team. And then we have the downtown space, lots of opportunities for jobs, internships, and other activities. Um, we also have the third ward as well. We are known as the city of festivals. So again, the students not only take advantage of um, being in Milwaukee for jobs, internships, and other um, professional development, but also for um, the excitement of being a part of Milwaukee, such a wonderful city. This gives another better idea of where Marquette is in relation to the city of Milwaukee. Um, whatever you see highlighted here is Marquette's campus. Um, nothing outside of it is Marquette and nothing inside of that highlighted space is anything but Marquette. So it is a really nice um, compact community with lots of green space for our students as well. Getting involved on campus, um, we have over 81% of our um, students are involved in some sort of student organization. 
We have 29 student, 29% of our students who study abroad. Uh, we have lots of study abroad opportunities, um, both for um, just kind of our core classes, as well as uh, study abroad options for major specific courses. 75% um, of our students participate in an internship before they graduate. 63% um, of our business students actually have two or more internships before they graduate. And then 21% of our students participate in research opportunities. Um, our College of Arts and Sciences is especially um, big on those research opportunities for our students. Like I mentioned briefly before, we do have, we are D1 athletic schools, so we have 14 Division I uh, sports that play in the Big East Conference. We also have club sports and intramural sports if you are also interested in participating in those activities. And then we um, like to talk about a fit, finding your fit when you are searching for um, a college or university. And so we, we put that into academic, financial, and personal. So the academic fit, our application is open currently for that fall 2022 semester. Um, and our deadline is December 1st. We do a pooled admission. So we wait until December 1st to send out any of those decisions. Um, and so once, once we get all those um, applications in on that December 1st day, we will send out those decisions before the holidays um, and you'll be able to know before the start of the new year, um, the decision of campus and some of the scholarship information. For our application, we only require. Up next is the University of Tulsa. Hi guys, my name is Sally Moore and I am one of the admission counselors here at the University of Tulsa. I am going to share my screen real quick just so you guys can kind of see a little bit more about us. Um, if you don't know that much about Tulsa, we are located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're about a five and a half hour drive from St. Louis and about a four hour drive from Kansas City. Some quick facts about us is that we have about 3000 undergraduate students, so we are a private, small college, but you get a really big college feel with that. Um, some of our great opportunities is that we have over 100 academic programs, anywhere from engineering, co computer science, nursing, natural sciences, we pretty much have a lot of it. Uh, mo more than half of our students are actually outside of Oklahoma, though, with 265 from Missouri. On campus, there's a ton of things to do. We have um, over eight different dining options in our student union. And we also have a cafe in our library, which a lot of students go to. It is Starbucks, except it just doesn't have the brand name. 80% um, of our students also choose to live on campus all four years. I think the majority of this is because we have multiple different options from community style. We also have townhomes, one, two, three bedroom suites and apartments. You really can't go wrong with our living situation. When it comes to cheering on our sports teams, we have 17 NCAA Division I-A sports teams, and we're actually the smallest Division I-A sport football school in the nation. So you do really get that small school feel with the big school atmosphere. Um, we also have over 200 student organizations on campus. What's really cool is if you don't find an organization that you like, you can always just grab 10 friends and start a new organization get student funding from that as well. When it comes to student success, each student when they enroll at TU is paired with a um, student success advisor as soon as they get in. This is a pretty cool opportunity because they'll help coach you and navigate through campus, find the resources you need and develop your college experience and professional development roadmaps that make the most of your time at TU. With this, we also have career coaches and also financial coaches as well to help you find budgeting, everything like that. Um, we are committed to helping students maximize their success at TU. So I'm your support until you enroll at TU and then you have support when you're there for four years. And then even when you graduate, we want you to have support when you graduate as well. Because of that, we have a brand new program. We have a ton of good outcomes at TU a 93% placement rate but a brand new um, program we are starting in the fall of 2022 class is our job guarantee. With this, you come in, you sign a contract your freshman year, pretty much just saying you're going to take the steps that make sure that you will find a job and that you are prepared to find a job when you graduate. 
What this means is that when you graduate, if you can't find a job within six months, you can come back and we will give you six grad, grad school credit hours for free. So that's also a really great program to kind of have that in your back pocket as well. If you've never been to Tulsa, we have a lot of great things. We have actually made the Rolling Stone magazine in January 2020 for our, our in music scene. And they said that um, we are where history, social consciousness, and barroom jamming make it one of the most fun places to visit. You can't go wrong with anything that we have. Our TU campus is about 200 acres of land. Um, and we're minutes from downtown, entertainment districts, restaurants, minor league sports teams, and shopping areas all around Tulsa. If you've never been, I highly suggest you come. Um, also in the attractions picture, you can also see a picture of our gathering place. This has also been on a lot of uh, magazines and lists. We were named the world's 100 greatest places in 2019 by Time Magazine. And in National Geographic's list, we were the 12 mind-bending playgrounds around the world. Something else that's super surprising is recently we took first place in USA Today's Best Park of 2021 ahead of the St. Louis Forest Park that only took second. So with our application, we're pretty easy. We can take either the Common App or the TU application. We don't have an application fee until November 1st, so it's 50 extra dollars in your pocket. And we are test optional like a lot of the other schools right now. We do have a holistic admission process. So if we, instead of looking just mainly at your grades, we wanna get to know you and know what sports you are in, what activities you're in outside of the classroom, which is always really good to know. Some other things are, is I'm not your only representative in the Missouri area. We also have Teresa Bont, who is also really good. I have all of Missouri except for the St. Louis and Kansas City area, and Teresa has the St. Louis and Kansas City area. So if you're in that area, you can contact her. Like I said, we are your support guides until you enroll at TU, and we want to help you through the entire process of enrolling to college and help you with all of that. These are just some of the amazing places that we have been honored and recognized by on our campus. We are hosting visitors in person this year, and so we really want you to come visit our campus. You can see all of these great things for yourself. Our library is huge, and then you just turn around and you can see downtown Tulsa from it. You don't get that at a lot of places. So I do highly recommend you come. You can just go to our that website right there, utulsa.edu slash tour, and you can sign up for a college visit. Thank you so much. Thank you, University of Tulsa. Up next, we have Creighton University. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Maddie Hopkins, and I am an admissions representative here at Creighton. Um, <clears throat> I work with all students from all different territories, but essentially Creighton is a Jesuit institution. The Jesuits are the largest order of Catholic priests. You certainly don't need to be Catholic to attend Creighton or any one of the other 27 Jesuit universities in the country. We have over 140 academic programs and we truly are a liberal arts institution and students will receive that well-rounded education. Classes are taught by professors, not TAs, and we have about 4,400 undergraduate students and another 4,400 graduate students. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one with an average class size of about 24 students. 70% of our students come from out of state, um, so outside of Nebraska, and we have students from all 50 states and 50 different countries. Our undergraduate programs include the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hyder College of Business, and the College of Nursing. We have our own dental school, law school, medical school, occupational therapy, pharmacy, physical therapy, PA, NP, and a graduate school. Um, all located on one very walkable campus. Um, and we give preference to our undergraduate Creighton students to those professional programs. This is a big deal. For example, the acceptance rate for our undergrad into our medical school is around 50%. For students applying from outside of Creighton, that acceptance rate goes down to about six to 
And we've had about 157 students apply to medical school last year, which is more than Princeton, MIT, or, or Georgetown. Uh, similarly, the acceptance rate for our dentist, dental school is around 65 to 80% for our own Creighton undergrads, which goes down to about 6 to 10% for outside of Creighton. We have developed an interpersonal approach to education, and we offer a team approach um, for healthcare education. So we want our students to have that experience on teams. Um, we're building a second healthcare campus in Phoenix, which is super exciting, which will be finished this year. So once it's finished, we will be the largest Catholic healthcare education provider in the country. Um, so Creighton was voted one of the top schools in the country for undergraduate research opportunities. And we want our undergrads to come in excited for research. So that means as early as freshman year, you can be involved in some sort of research with a professor. Our Hyder College of Business is very well connected in the Omaha community. All of our business professors have practical experience and we have six chartered financial analysts on faculty, which is more than any other business school in the world. Um, we offer two practicums on campus. So the only student run Apple store in the world called the IJ practicum. Um, and we also have a portfolio practicum where students are investing $12 million of our university's endowment in the stock market. We have nine Bloomberg terminals for students to do so. Um, internships. So Omaha was voted the number one city for paid internships. So there are more internships available um, than we have students. So Omaha is home to four Fortune 500 companies, which is which are within walking distance of campus. And we have about 50 to 60 other companies that have operations in Omaha. Um, Omaha was also ranked the number one city for college graduates because it's a fun place to live. Um, there's great job opportunities and then the cost of living is low. We have about 250 clubs and organizations on campus, including sorority and fraternity life, um, intramural sports, um, intercultural organizations. Um, because 70% of our students are from outside of Nebraska, um, students are on campus and in Omaha on the weekend. So making this a very residential and fun campus. Um, we also have um, a very vibrant service and retreat um, community. So our students are very actively involved. We also have our own retreat center, which is kind of out in the country, about 30 miles from campus, which is a really cool experience um, if you want to go on a retreat. Um, so we are division one, so we're a part of the Big East Conference. We average about 17,000 fans per game at the home men's basketball games. Um, so those are a lot of fun. Um, we also host the College World Series here in Omaha. Um, and we have tons of club and inter intramural sports. So athletics is a big part of campus life um, here at Creighton. We also offer a ton of different study abroad programs. We have a global scholars program, which is new, um, where students spend two semesters away and two summers away. So really giving students that exposure if they're interested in doing um, like international business or international relations. We're also very proud of our students. We have a 99% success rate for the College of Arts and Sciences and Hyder College of Business and 100% for our College of Nursing with students having jobs, um, attending graduate school or enrolling in a volunteer program within six months of graduation. So here are some of the things that we require for our application. We are also test optional. Um, so no need to submit your test score. Um, and then here are some of our deadlines. So we look forward to reviewing your application and welcoming you to campus. And we can't wait to meet you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have St. Louis University. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Notham. I'm one of the senior admission counselors here at St. Louis University. I've been at SLU for about five and a half years. Prior to that, I was a high school teacher in the St. Louis area. So I have great experience working with high school students, previously as a teacher uh, and now in higher ed. I typically work with students from central and southern Missouri, as well as the South County and kind of southern metro area of St. Louis. And so uh, hopefully tonight I'll give you a great preview of everything that SLU has to offer. Some basic information. Uh, we have nearly about 8,000 students in our undergraduate programs. 
We include our grad programs, our law school, our medical school. We're a little over the 12,000 uh, students for the total enrollment across our entire campus. So medium sized and we like that uh, since that will give us both big and small school benefits that we have. Uh, we do have two campuses, one obviously located here in St. Louis University uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, however, we were one of the first US universities with a second campus in Europe. That is our SLU Madrid campus. Oftentimes our students will study abroad there for a semester, but even potentially for a year. Uh, some of our programs offer special two and two options like our nursing program where you can study abroad for your first two years at SLU Madrid and then come back to St. Louis for your, for your last two years uh, at SLU here in St. Louis. Uh, we also have nearly 40 other different study abroad locations, and so if that's something that you're looking for. Nearly 60 to 65 percent of our students will participate in the study abroad experience. Although, you know, we are very, uh, uh, see a lot of students coming from the St. Louis and Missouri areas, uh, 65 percent of our students uh, in our undergraduate programs come from outside of the state of Missouri. So we do have a strong national draw to a lot of the great programs that we have. Uh, we were founded back in 1818, which actually makes us the oldest university west of the Mississippi as well as the second oldest Jesuit institution in the country. Uh, my colleagues tonight at the other Jesuit institutions have done a great job explaining what the value of a Jesuit education could uh, provide for you guys. Uh, so I'll just kind of quickly point out that our students completed nearly 2 million community service hours uh, in 2019. Uh, and that's something that we do not require out of our students. It's something that is entirely voluntary. You can do no hour, you can do zero hours a year, you can do 50 hours a year. It's how you want to get involved uh, on campus that allow you to do that. So, uh, we were actually ranked as a, by the Princeton Review as the number two service engagement university in the country. Uh, all of our programs at SLU are direct admit to the degree program. We offer nearly 90 different undergraduate programs to choose from, as well as several other minors and different concentrations within various departments. Uh, with all the programs being direct admit, you're not applying to SLU just for general admission as an incoming freshman. Uh, you're applying directly to, the, to that degree program that you're hoping to study. Uh, and that includes all of our competitive programs like our physical therapy program, which is a six year DPT program, our occupational therapy, uh, which is a five year master's program, our nursing program, which is a four year direct admit BSN, as well as our uh, uh, flight science program, professional pilots program uh, that allows you to become a professional pilot. Uh, those are all direct admit into those programs. And so uh, what's important to know about those four programs is that they'll have an early application deadline of December 1st. We have strong programs across the board. Uh, we're well known for our programs related to the medical field. We do have our own medical school, School of Nursing, or Doisy College of Health Sciences with a lot of great programs. We did open up a brand new St. Louis University Hospital last fall. as so we just celebrated the one year anniversary of the new St. Louis University Hospital located right next to the previous St. Louis University Hospital. The, the first level one trauma center built in the St. Louis area in nearly 30 years. And so we're very excited to have this top quality patient care facility for the St. Louis area, as well as a top quality educational facility for our students. Also last fall, we opened up the brand new interdisciplinary science and engineering building. It's a brand new 90,000 square foot facility for all of our STEM students uh, that uh, included also 10,000 square feet of new research space. Uh, so we're very excited to provide the, uh, a brand new place for, uh, place for innovative learning opportunities and great research opportunities uh, for our students here at SLU. Uh, on top of the medical programs, we have great strong programs in engineering and STEM, as well as are we well known for our programs uh, with business. Uh, since we have the major advantage of being located right in the middle of the city of St. Louis and have some uh, great partnerships with some of the area businesses and corporations that uh, provide a lot of great internship opportunities and potential employment after students graduate. If you're not sure where you want to apply to uh, when you come to SLU, that's fine. Still deciding is always one of our most popular majors for those students take time to try to figure out what's the best degree for them. On our campus, we're a very active campus. 93% of our freshmen live on campus. And so we have a very fun and engaging uh, environment for all of our students. That's ranging from our K-SLU radio station. We offer, we offer 30 club sports and 50 intramural sports at SLU. Uh, if you don't wanna be a music or fine arts major, then you will be, provide a great opportunity to participate in our, in our programs, which still allow you to do so. Like many other uh, my uh, partner institutions tonight, uh, we are test optional. All of our programs ranging from admission, scholarships, or competitive programs are all test optional. So you're not required to submit a test score to be considered for any of that. Uh, if you have gotten a great score, you wanna submit that, that's perfectly fine. All that we'll need is your high school transcript in order to review your application for admission. One a big change thing that we've had this year is switching to a three application path system. 
uh, early decisions, that binding agreement to come to St. Louis University, if you want to consider that pathway, we need to have that application submitted by November 1st. If you early action and revenue decision are non-binding, uh, that will allow you to opportunities to, uh, with early action, to apply by December 1st. Uh, if you're a really strong candidate uh, and SLU is one of the top choices for you, definitely consider applying our early action pathway and our regular decision pathway allows you uh, to be considered uh, for St. Louis University regardless of that. Whenever you apply to SLU, you're automatically considered for one of our merit-based scholarships that can range between $4,000 and $25,000 per year. We also offer com uh, competitive scholarships like our presidential scholarship. You do not require the FAFSA in order to uh, be considered for our merit aid. But uh, with the FAFSA opening up this upcoming fall uh, in, uh, and just the end of the week, uh, if you want to be considered for need-based aid, please file the FAFSA. We'll be able to review that for you. Thank you so much, guys, for allowing me to speak to you tonight. And I'll put some contact information for myself as well as the Find Your Counselor section of our website. Thank you, guys. Thank you, St. Louis University. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session today, but now we're gonna to transition to the Q&A portion. I wanna encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your camera on and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. So the first question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So that's me. Um, I think the best advice that I could give students is to find their best fit. Find a place you feel like is home. Um, I know we. I know some of my colleagues talked about fit. Um, it is really important. So there's going to be a problem in your four years at university. We want you to be in a safe space um, that you have a great opportunity that you could reach out to um, somebody to, for help, um, for assistance, or whatever. So find a home. Find a place. We all want you to go to school. Um, I often say I don't care where you go to school as long as you go to school. Um, well, I think UD could be a best fit for everybody. I know that there's over 4,400 universities. So really find that fit for you. I would say along with fit is um, your top choices. Try and visit each campus um, during during the week if possible. I know some schools offer Saturday tools, Saturday tours, but try and go during the week when campus is, you know, hopping and classes in session, it really get a feel for what that's like to help you find your fit and see if you can see yourself there for four years. Yeah, and I um, encourage you all to ask questions. Ask as many questions as you might have. No question is a bad question or anything like that. And that's what we're here for. We're here to answer those questions for you. And so we really want to make sure that we get those questions answered. So. Um, ask those questions that you have. Mine would probably be to look at colleges that you wouldn't think of looking at. A lot of people are very set on either a public or a private institution, a big or a small one, but check all over. You'll never know where you're going to find that fit at. Like Missy said, you're never going to find where you want to be unless you go visit the campus, but just check all over. That's my advice. Yeah, my advice is similar, um, but, you know, in the, in these, you know, last few years of high school, you're going to hear a lot of opinions from a lot of different people, parents, family, friends on where you should go to college. My advice would be go with your gut and ask yourself, like, could these be my people? Could these be my best friends? Could these be my advisors for the next four years? Um, because that's, you know, how you can make your decision. So that would be my advice is ask yourself, could these be my people and trust yourself throughout this process. The other presenters did a great job. They've covered a lot of the important parts to do. So I will just kind of kind of give a nice little summary of think, do all of that. Uh, do not be afraid to contact your admission counselor. If you're freaking about deadlines, it is our job to keep track of those deadlines. Uh, do not feel like you're bothering us. It is our job to answer your questions. Take tours. Don't assume that, that one school is the best fit for you. Apply to several different schools. Visit several different schools. That's the best way to find the best fit for you. Great advice from the group. Thank you all for sharing. So that concludes our virtual college fair for today. But before we go, I do have a few closing announcements. 
As you exit from this session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. Also wanna remind you to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And then finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash Missouri. I wanna thank our amazing presenters for joining us, but also thank you to our attendees for taking time out of your busy day. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you so much.